Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. This is the news on Thursday, the 1st of June. We are here live in the studio, so get your thoughts in the comments. Big news coming today. We've got the follow-on from last night's breaking news that Man United have agreed personal terms with Mason Mount. All that is left is to negotiate a fee with Chelsea. We've got the latest on that. There seems to be quite a chunky difference in what we want to pay and what Chelsea want us to pay. We'll talk about that. There's also breaking news this morning uh, coming out of The Athletic um, that Manchester United have held detailed talks um, over potential deals for Rasmus Hoyland and Colo Muani. Um, both of those coming from Laurie Whitwell in this hour. So we'll be going over that, whether we like them, whether we should be signing them, what that means for the rest of Man United's transfer window. And there's a little bit of an update on Maguire as well. His potential exit from Manchester United may have some, I wouldn't say clouded edge, but I will say there's a potential situation that needs sorting there. We will get into all of that throughout today. Daniel Berry says, Joe Smith back again last night, this morning. You know what I mean? Someone's got to do it. Jay's leaving early. Jay's off today. So look what we've got. We've got the we've got the right man for the job, if we're honest, haven't we? Uh, right, let's just get straight into this then. This is coming out of the Daily Mail, but it's also, I've seen it in, in other sources as well um, over the last sort of 48 hours, um, last week really, basically, since this Mason Mount um, rumour started snowballing. There's always been this question over a fee. Manchester United will step up pursuit of Chelsea midfielder Mason Mount with personal terms unlikely to be an issue. And I think the Telegraph went one step further and said that they have actually been agreed. Um, but the clubs are 30 million apart in their valuations. That is the, uh, the, the difficulty here. Eriksen Hag has identified Mount as one of the priority transfer targets with United Chiefs keen to complete early business this summer as they look to avoid the uncertainty of last year's close season window. United face arch rival City at Wembley, we know all of that. But the club will immediately turn their attentions to executing their summer recruitment plan with a deal for Mount among the priorities. You see there, the hurdle to overcome will be to agree a fee. United value Mount, who has just 12 months left on his contract, and I'll add this, has been injured for most of this season at around 55 million, while Chelsea priced the England star at closer to 85. Todd, you can't just start charging people what you are willing to pay for things. That's not how, you know, just because you spent 120 million on Enzo Fernandez, just because you spent 80 million quid on Wesley Fofana, doesn't mean we're all going to do what you would do. You would spend 85 million on Mason Mount. No one else in football thinks he's worth that. And unfortunately, if you want to sell him, you're probably going to have to come down a little bit on that. To me, if we took out the fact that it's Mason Mount and you look at what he is, he's a young attacking midfielder who can keep the ball, who is good off the ball, who uh, runs, runs with the ball well, he dribbles well. He's a good passer. Uh, he's industrious. He's hardworking. He's had, last season, I think he got 13 goals and 16 assists, which is very good numbers, over 10 and 10 in the Premier League alone, which again, as, as I've, I said last night, and I you know, it's sort of always had it in the back of my mind from the Wayne Rooney days. If you're getting 10 goals and 10 assists in the Premier League a season, you're a very good player. Not, you know, it's, it's difficult to do both of those things simultaneously. So he's a very good player, or he has the potential to be a very good player. But he's not worth 85 million. You know, I think 50 to 60, to me, is in the ballpark of realistically what you're going to pay for him. He's also English, which comes at a premium because of the, the sort of homegrown quota that you have to adhere to as a Premier League team. A lot of the players United are looking to, to sell in the summer, and this was put in the chat last night, but it's true. A lot of the players United are looking to sell this summer will come off of that homegrown quota. Maguire, McTominay... Um, Brandon Williams, potentially Wan-Bissaka now, Dallow signed a deal if he is to go. Um, these are all sort of academy or English players, which, you know, kind of need replacing to a certain extent. And I think he's by far the best and most available English midfielder that United could possibly get this summer. So it makes sense to me for a lot of reasons. I think he's a good player. Um, it's just, you know, if someone's had 12, I think he played 28 games this season. Um which is mostly due to injury, that is a concern. That's not something you can you sort of pretend doesn't knock a, a few million quid off the price tag. He's also, you know, never really had a, 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 a 
truly outstanding season. I think 13 goals, 16 assists is excellent, but it's not someone where you go, this guy could be one of the best in the world. You know, we're looking at 85 million quid. That's that's like one of the best players in your position in the world money, even nowadays. Um, so that seems a lot to me. I, I would assume Chelsea will have to budge because they've got, what is it, literally like 30 players in their squad, 32 players in their squad, something ridiculous. Um, he's one of the few that is young enough and good enough to to get to sort of garner a big fee, but wouldn't necessarily affect their starting eleven. He's in a pretty unique position here. The other people they're talking about letting go are the likes of Thiago Silva, who is, you know, my grandma's age, um, and you're not going to get a lot of money for him. Mount is one of the few where they can people want him. He's actually worth a bit of money, um, and he's willing to leave. I think they have to sell him really. Uh, Kovacic being another one. Um, so I think they're not in a great bargaining position. I would be surprised if United paid more than sort of 65 million. We might see a sort of 60 rise into 80 situation. Um, but, you know, as we've seen with Bruno Fernandes, I think we, it was last week, United paid an extra 10 million on, on Bruno because of all of the things he's done for Manchester United. And I don't think anyone um, that's a United fan or a fan of football generally would say he hasn't been worth 65 million quid that I think we've now paid for him. So maybe we could structure it like that. But... The idea of paying 80 to 85 million for Mason Mount, to me, is is absolutely ridiculous. Um, Big Trev said, what a signing this would be. Ten Hag would make him a top player. Don't think of the player uh, he is now. Think of what Ten Hag will turn him into. I think there's definitely a case to be made for that. He seems the sort of player that Ten Hag would love as well. Hardworking, industrious. One of those players that t t sort of off the field kind of goes under the radar. He's not someone that is, is in the newspapers every other week, certainly that I've seen. Um, he, he seems to be the sort of player that's got a relatively low profile, seems a relatively nice lad. You know, he's, he's, he's all of those things that a manager would like. He just does his job, goes home, and I'll see you on Saturday kind of thing. So, you know, it does seem like a, a, the right sort of signing for me. Um, Doc Rock says, sell Henderson uh, for more beer money. Yeah, there you go. That, that's what we're spending it on, hopefully. Uh, Mikhail says, Joe is a handsome lad. Thank you. Uh, Anil says, 80 million is mental. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Scott Williams says, don't forget Mount was playing under Fat Frank for some of his years and is a defensive minded uh, and, and under a defensive minded Tuchel. Ten Hag can get the best out of him. Yeah, let's, let's be honest. Most of, well, I don't know if it's most of. I would guess most of um, Mason Mount's professional career, he's played under Frank Lampard, hasn't he? Either at Derby, those two years at Chelsea or this last six months at Chelsea. I think, yeah, he's played a stint under Tuchel, a little bit under Potter, but most of his career has played under Frank Lampard. That's not exactly a sort of breeding ground for success, is it? So, you know, let's get him in under Ten Hag and see what we can do with him. Um, Sir Jamie uh, says, Joe, how much do you think realistically we should get Mount for for it to be a good deal? It all depends on how much we have to spend, assuming that United have still got enough for a big money striker um, after this. Um, I think... 60 million or under, and I think it could still be a, an excellent signing. I mean, any, any, you know, if he comes in and is amazing, you'd pay 80. But I think 50 to 60 is really pushing it. But I think if it said an initial fee of 55 with the potential to rise to 75, I could stomach that. Because if he's shit, it's 55, um, which is still a waste of money. But you know what I'm saying. Um, right, let's move on uh, to uh, our next story then. And this is one coming out of. The Athletic, uh, we've seen this morning, Laurie Whitwell tweeting here, and we've got the, um, I'll, I'll take you through some of the article as well. Man United hold talks, detailed talks, over Atalanta striker Rasmus Hoyland. Eric Ten Hag ideally wants a young forward plus an experienced one. Hoyland 20 falls into the former category. Frankfurt's uh, Randall Colo Moani also discussed. Negotiations on over Mason Mount, so that's another confirmation of the uh, uh, Mount situation there. Um, Two things here. One, he's a United fan, Hoyland. Um, and Stretford Paddock tweeted this um, a little bit earlier. But basically, there was a quote from him um, saying that he likes Manchester United. And I know that just because you like United doesn't mean you're going to be a good player. But he is someone that we know will have the excitement, the, the, the sort of the drive. And I hate to say the word because it's been so overused over the last sort of decade the passion to play for Man United. Uh, Rasmus Hoyland, he said, now that you ask, I will not hide the fact that I'm a huge Manchester United fan. So personally, that would be one of the biggest things for me. That was earlier in the year. Now, obviously, 
and I don't know if it's played a part in it at all. Uh, United are have uh, United have held detailed talks. Um, Laurie Whittle goes on to say, out of the two, Hoyland is seen as the likelier player to join United at this stage. Eric Ten Hag has made a centre forward a priority sign in the summer and views Harry Kane, who scored 30 Premier League goals this season, as the ideal candidate. But it remains to be seen whether Tottenham ch uh, chairman Daniel Levy would sanction a sale to a Premier League rival, and so United are exploring alternatives. It's interesting that he uses the word alternatives there. Um, in the same article that we're talking about, Rasmus Hoyland, but he also says, uh, on that tweet, if we can just bring that back up, sorry. Um, there you go, commentator's curse there from uh, the producer. Uh, United wants a young forward plus an experienced one. So to me, he's saying on the tweet that this would be a and Kane situation. And then he's sort of hinting in the article where he says United is exploring alternatives. It might be an or Kane situation. Um, Jay said this for a while and I, and I completely agree with him. When you look at the form of sort of both Veghorst and Martial this season. Um, Martial in terms of fitness and, if we're honest, what, he, what he's been doing on the pitch recently. Uh, and Veghorst, you know, in terms of his quality. United need two strikers. We genuinely need... Because Martial isn't, isn't really fit to be a backup in his current form. Um, and he's, you know, he's sort of proving that with, with, with his injury before the FA Cup final. And from a sort of human perspective, you feel sorry for him. And, you know, no one wants a player to be injured as often as he is. But United are a football team that have to be able to rely on people to play for them. Uh, and Martial isn't someone you can rely on. And if we're honest as well, he's not someone who you can rely on to score goals. He's got 19 goals in the last three years. You know, that's... I think, I think um, Julian Alvarez has got 17 for City this season. And it's his first season. That's what you need from a backup, not someone who isn't available most of the time. And when he is, gets you six goals a season. You know, that's that's not really an option. So I think this is a um, and Harry Kane situation. I think Rasmus Holland, who's 20 years old um, himself, I think he's got 17 goals this season. Uh, a couple of stats on him and we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to have a chat with um, some Danish football experts this week as this story picks up because I want to get the full inside track on him because he's a player that I haven't seen a whole lot of, um, in all honesty, playing for Atalanta. Uh, but just looking at some of the stats that I think Ten Hag might be interested in. Um, his, he's, he's six foot three and a half, by the way, for people who don't know. You look at a picture of him because he's got quite a wide neck. I thought he was short. He's not. He's massive. He's six foot three. So whatever that, you know, you want to you sort of glean from that. Um, however, his progressive carries, his dribbles um, and that side of his game is actually uh, sort of well above average. Um, which is something you don't often see from, from or you don't always see from, from bigger players. Um, another thing that I think um, is probably something that we've, we've looked at, like, yeah, his successful take on attempted is in the top 7%. His successful take on, so converting those into actually, you know, getting past players is in the top 15%. And that's of all strikers in the top um, five leagues and the Europa League and the, the Champions League. So he's in very good company there with his dribbling stats. He's carries into the penalty area, which again, if you imagine six foot three target man, he stood waiting in the prim in, in the uh, the penalty area. He's not bringing the ball in. However, he's in the top seven percent for carries into the penalty area. So he's someone that is more than willing to get on the ball and drive at defenders or certainly drive into the box, which I think is is a good sign when you think about Ten Hag's style of play, winning the ball high at the pitch. And I think we saw Rashford uh, talking about this, you know, trying to score or have a shot within five seconds, which is kind of an advancement on what. Um, Ragnick was sort of trying to instill last season and to do that if you're winning the ball high at the pitch you then need to be able to drive into the box with the ball if he presses the defender and wins it back you then need him to be able to drive um, into uh, the the box his ball recovery is again uh, so how often a loose ball is recovered which is a stat that is often associated with pressing and you know the ball sort of spilling into a, a kind of neutral area is in the top 19% so again, he's someone who is better than most at all of these things. He's a good dribbler for his size. He's a, you know, he wins the ball back well. He carries the ball into the box well. And another thing that I think, it may all just boil down to this. And this makes, this fills me with so much calmness. After the finishing we've seen this season, everyone underperforming their XG. Bruno Fernandes, what, I think we've all seen it. He, he should have had 15 to 16 assists this season in the Premier League, according to his expected assists. He's had eight. His shots on target percentage is in the top 9%. And his goal-to-shot ratio 
is well above average. <laughs> How nice is that? How nice is it that there's someone who, when he shoots, it actually goes in? I think it might just be that. Forget about all this ball recoveries bullshit. When he shoots, the ball goes in. Bruno Fernandes is licking his lips. He's only 20. Think what he could be in a bit. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, Ko Yal says, we badly need two strikers, one goalkeeper and one CDM too. Well, we're linked with, not a CDM, but a midfielder. We're linked with a striker or two. Um, and it seems as though, for once, United are actually prioritising the players that a lot of people can sort of look from the outside in and, and think, we need two strikers, we need a midfielder, uh, we need a centre-back. Um, and it looks like United are going for that, which is obviously very good news. Um, <clears throat> right, let's move on uh, to our uh, next story. Then this is from, uh, again, it's from the Daily Mail. It's a bit of an odd one, this. This is an exclusive, according to them. Uh, it came out last night. Manchester United are set to pay Harry Maguire 10 million to leave Old Trafford this summer with the out of favour captain still having two years to run on his £190,000 a week contract. Now, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to give my opinion on it. And I want yours as well. Um, Harry Maguire is in line for a £10 million payoff from Man United if he leaves Old Trafford this summer. Okay, why? Maguire cost £80 million from Leicester in 2019, but is now valued closer to £30 million due to his age and the fact that he's two-thirds of the way through his six-year contract. Okay. Maguire has another two years left, if we, if we scroll down to the next paragraph, sorry. Maguire has another two years left on his £190,000 a week deal, and it's anticipated that he would earn only half of that amount at a new club, leaving United to foot a £10 million wage bill to get him off their books. Why would we? What is like? Why is the, why would that be happening? This 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 feels untrue to me, and 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 obviously I don't know. I'm not in the room, but it's very common for players to go to a, a, a club. You know, pe players often move up the ranks. They go from a Leicester to United, like Maguire's done. But it's very common for a player. Let's you know, he, he won the Europa League last last night. So let's use him as an example. Ivan Rakitic is almost certainly on less money at Sevilla than he was at Barcelona. You see it all the time, Tellers at, at Sevilla. You, like, you, literally the examples are there, Chris Smalling at Roma, going from United to Roma. I don't remember stories that we had to pay the rest of Chris Smalling's wages for him to go to, Bar uh, to Roma. Why would we be doing that? To the point where I'm not, I, I'm obviously open to be proven wrong here, but I don't think, I don't see any evidence in this article that this is even true. And to me, I think Harry Maguire, and, and you know, performance-wise, he's not been good enough. He's rightfully been replaced by Martinez and Varane. And I think for his career, I think for United, I think for everyone involved, it makes sense for him to make a, a change this summer, go to a club where he'll play a lot because he's good enough to play for certain styles of teams at certain levels, but not good enough to play for United under Ten Hag. With all that being said, he is an easy target. He is someone that is as ridiculed as anyone I've seen in recent seasons. You can say almost anything you want about Maguire and people will lap it up, like it on Twitter and laugh along with you. But this whole thing of, oh, now he's costing United another 10 million to get him to, to leave. This, why would that be the case? To me, there's two options here. One, this isn't true because who, since when do you start paying players wages off as you sell them? That's not a thing. And secondly, if it is a thing, this must be happening all the time, but usually we don't hear about it. But the reason we're hearing about it is because it's Maguire and it's easy to take the piss out of him. 80 million, well, there's another 10 million, so that's 90 million. You're going to see all of that shit going on. So I think either this isn't happening or if it is, it happens all the time, but we don't usually hear about it because it, it's, it's not about a player that people like to ridicule. To me, this doesn't make any sense. Spectre to say nonsense article. <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? I could be wrong, but I don't see why this would be happening. It happen, players, players sort of go down the, 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 the financial ladder all the time and their parent club doesn't just pay them their wages off. Um, yeah, to, be, to me, this is just a, a, a sort of thinly veiled attempt to get people to... Another 10 for Maguire? Bloody hell, that's 90 million now. What a waste of money. That's what it feels like to me. Could be wrong. We'll wait and see. But... 
Um, it looks as though Harry Maguire will probably leave Manchester United this summer. I think that's best for him. I think that's best for United. And hopefully we can have a captain that plays every week rather than one that sits on the bench. And I think that would be best for all involved. That is going to be all from me this morning. Uh, any updates on Hoyland, on Kolo Moani, on Harry Kane, on Mason Mount, we will be live as soon as that news drops here on Stretford Paddock. So make sure you hit subscribe. Put the notification bell on as well because the transfer window opened today, folks. The transfer window opened today and we know what an absolute ride it is going to be until the 1st of September when the transfer window closed. So hit the notification bell because we will be live every time there is breaking news. Now is the time! That's going to be all from me. But before I go, just want to mention uh, very quickly, we do this job and I love it, obviously. And occasionally people recognise us uh, and they'll say hello and we'll chat about United usually. And it's always a great time. And every so often I'm sort of shocked and surprised uh, by the sort of reach of the channel. Um, and, you know, the, the, a few weeks ago, um, one of my dad's friends who lives in California was chatting to a guy who was doing some work for him uh, called Armando Dominguez from Santa Rosa. And he watches us. And it just made me think, I know it's a bit of a, you know, you know, thanks everyone. But just thank you to everyone around the world who watches us, who sits there and wherever you sit in it, whichever part of the world, it is an absolute pleasure to do what we do. So thank you to Armando Dominguez. Thank you to everyone around the world who watches. I'm so excited for the summer and for transfers and for the weekend as well. So thank you to everyone. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in a bit.